Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is January the 10th. It is Monday and you know what time it is? It is Roxy time. I decided to uh, do a little bit of a deep dive and see what all the smart people, all the analysts and all the market uh, specialists and experts are saying about Occidental. I gather some information, share it with you as we get closer and closer to um, Q4 2021 reporting. We may as well uh, take a quick look and see what's going on with Oxy uh, and what's in the news. Firstly, uh, if you go to Occidental's website, which I do from time to time, and this is a screenshot from the website, you will notice like most of the other energy companies, Oxy is zeroing in, talking about low carbon, net zero, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, as I said before, um, this is not really my thing, but uh, you know, I have uh, great sympathy for them in terms of how they need to uh, manage through the troubled waters of all the activism around um, carbon and uh, CO2 emissions specifically. Anyway, the, the big question is, what's in the news? So one of the reasons why I haven't really been making any videos about Oxy over the past couple of weeks or so is because there's no news, right? So sometimes people say no news is good news. In the case of Oxy Dental, it probably is. No news is good news. We know that uh, for the fourth quarter, the price was pretty good. Uh, we know that Oxy is almost printing money, but this is their, uh, an actual screenshot from their website. And their news update shows two news results. One was posted on January the 5th, which is Oxy providing low carbon venture investor update on March the 23rd. And the very next day, they posted an update saying Occidental to announce fourth quarter results on Thursday, February the 24th. And the conference call will be on February the 25th, which is in about, feels like 15 years from now. But uh, anyway, we've got to wait patiently and see what happens. Taking a quick look back, um, Oxy last posted earnings results on November the 4th, and they reported 87 cents per share, beating analyst consensus by uh, 21 cents. Analyst consensus was 66. Oxy earned 6.82 billion for the quarter, compared to the analyst estimates of 6.5 billion. So the beat on the top line and the bottom line revenue for Q3 was up 107% compared to the same quarter in the previous year, but that's a little bit of a, a misleading statistic because that was also the um, during the height of the uh, pandemic. Earnings are expected to grow by 40% or thereabouts in 2022 from $2.18 to $3.08 per share. Oxy has confirmed that its next quarterly earnings report will be published on Thursday, February the 24th, and the um, earnings call will be the, the following day. So guys, uh, a number of you have asked, uh, you know, what should I do or where should I be in terms of holding Oxy common? And for the purposes of this discussion, I'm talking about people who are long in Oxy or warrants, uh, not people who are day trading and doing uh, other kinds of fancy trades in terms of um, straddles and options and things like that. I'm just talking about people who are actually buying and sort of figuratively buying and holding, right? Um, I'm gonna cover that at the end of this video and talk a little bit about the warrants in more detail once again. These are our friends, uh, 17 analysts from uh, tip ranks with an average target price of $42, which is about 30% up from where we are today because Oxy, like most of the rest of the market has pulled back a little bit today. Like I said, it's Monday the 10th, uh, Oxy's down a bit today. So 42% is almost 30% up from uh, where we are, for example, today. My uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, target price for uh, Oxy is 51 because uh, very, very sophisticated calculations on the back of the napkin show me that uh, 17, which is my cost basis of thereabout, uh, times three, you know, it's 51. So uh, that's a two-bagger for me. So uh, let's see if it gets to 51. Earnings expectations. This is uh, from Zach's here on the left-hand side. We're going to take a little bit of uh, a closer look at earnings ESP in just a second, 12%. Most accurate estimate, buck 24. Current quarter estimate, dollar 11 cents. Current year estimate, $2.20. Over here, current consensus estimate, $1.08, $1.08, $1.11, about the same in terms of where the analysts expected to go. Let's talk a little bit about ESP. Zach's earnings ESP is the expected surprise prediction. 
It looks to find companies that have recently seen positive earnings estimates, revisions, activity. The idea is that more recent information is, generally speaking, more accurate. Well, that'd be true, right? The more uh, up-to-date the information is, uh, arguably, the more accurate it should be, because we can adjust our um, estimates as we go and can give a better predictor of the future, which can give investors an advantage in the earnings season. And well, how have they done in the past with this one? The technique has proven to be very useful for finding positive surprises. In fact, when combining a ZAX rank three, which is where Oxy is, or better, and a positive earnings ESP, stocks produce a positive surprise 70% of the time, while they also saw a 28.3% annual return on average, according to our 10 year back test. Well, that's pretty good. Huh? That's, uh, kind of uh, something that's worth boasting about and um, their earnings ESP, so expected surprise prediction for Occidental is 12% higher potentially than where it currently is predicted to land, which is, as I said a minute ago, about a buck, eight cents, nine cents, 10, 11 cents or so. So just over a dollar, dollar, 10 cents or so on average. Analyst predictions. So um, going a little bit beyond tip ranks, uh, tip ranks um, these, uh, what have we got here, 22, 25, 28 analysts uh, in jurisdictions outside of the United States included now have three buys, 10 outperforms, 12 holds, and three underperforms. Nobody says sell. Uh, I can't imagine an analyst actually saying sell, but there are a couple of um, analysts in the marketplace who um, recently had a sell. Um, I think uh, Janine Wyatt from Barclays was one of them. I'm not sure if, if it wasn't, then Janine, please forgive me. Um, the current earnings est estimate, as I just said, is a buck and some, uh, you know, maybe a buck and a dime or so. Uh, the number of analysts reporting on this is 20, the low estimate is 69 cents, median is dollar seven, you know, so a dollar something, guys, I don't know. What do you think? What, what do you, uh, you want to make a prediction? You want to be bold? You know, it's still um, more than a month before we find out how they actually did, but uh, look at look at the um, upward revisions here. So three months ago, the analysts were predicting 60 cents. Two months ago, they were saying a dollar. A month ago, they were saying a buck and six cents. And currently, they're saying about a buck and eight cents or so. So um, five revisions up, no revisions down. Uh, but you can see it's kind of been trending up. I wonder if it's going to change much as we get closer and closer to the earnings date. This is one of my uh, most favorite, um, not necessarily the uh, analyst schmanalyst, but the company as a whole, Morningstar. I like uh, the Morningstar uh, analyst reports. On Oxy, they've got a four-star rating on this. They've got a target uh, price or a fair value estimate. I shouldn't call it a target price. The fair value estimate on the stock is $44 per share. Uh, that'd be nice, huh? You know, we uh, about 10 bucks or so, 10, 12 bucks away from $44. It'd be interesting to see what we do between now and earnings date. And uh, Morningstar also has a consensus estimate of a buck and nine cents earnings per share. There's a bull case and a bear case for almost everything, but the uh, only one that resonates with me here, uh, specifically, maybe you could say I'm a little bit biased. Um, if I was totally biased, I wouldn't show you the bull case and the bear case, right? <laughs> so I'm showing you both, but only one of these is, is a, particularly a highlight for me. Oxy generates much more cash than it spends, which means that once the balance sheet has been patched up, it can restore its industry leading payouts to shareholders. So um, guys, you know, in the last conference call, they said they want to get to investment grade. They want to get their uh, long-term debt down to about 25 billion. Uh, we are there. We are right there right now. So it will be really interesting to see what the balance sheet looks like when uh, Rob Peterson and uh, Vicky Holub chat with us at the end of February, which I said earlier is like 15 years away. The bear case, you know what? These things have not changed over the past year or so maybe more than a year, almost two years, they've pretty much said the same thing. Wells exhibit high initial production rates also decline very quickly. The ER segment is capital intensive and a darker acquisition. You know, like, I think we've kind of gotten beyond all of this and the others we know about, you know, there's no, um, there's no big deal there. Um, they for sure here yeah, at the top of the page, Oxy is the cheapest source of production in the uh, premium. So anyway, make of that what you will, the bull case and the bear case. If you're an Occidental bear, then uh, you can tell me why uh, I will listen. This is CFRA. They've got a three-star rating on it. It's a hold. I like Stuart Clickman. He uh, usually has uh, good information. 
He's got a 12 month target price on Oxy of 36. Well, he's kind of being a little bit conservative here, I think. So Morningstar has a fair value market price of 44 and Stuart Glickman from, from CFRA is at 36. Maybe the answer lies somewhere between the two. And of course, it's almost impossible to predict the stock price of anything. So it doesn't matter what the target price is. If Oxy blows by $36, Stuart Glickman can just um, update his target price or upgrade the stock or do whatever he wants to do. If it drops back, he'll say, I'll still hold my target price at $36. Uh, interesting information here, operational earnings per share estimated uh, 2021. Buck ninety-five, uh, it's kind of difficult to estimate with uh, one quarter of twenty twenty-one lacking. So we have three quarters to work with, and then uh, the fourth quarter is effectively outstanding. So we don't know yet where it's at. How about free cash flow, guys? So this is always an interesting question, and it comes up all the time. So free cash flow means more than just free cash flow. In fact, maybe I'll take you to the bottom of the page here first. So free cash flow margin is actually a very interesting ratio if you want to look at that one instead of just free cash flow, because if we say Occidental uh, generated $2.5 billion free cash flow for the quarter, then we can all go, yay. Or you can say, what does that actually mean? So how about you take a ratio like free cash flow divided by revenue and then Oxy's free cash flow for three months. In other words, this was the last reported quarter, end of September, 2021 was 2.4 billion. Oxy's revenue for those same three months ending September 21 was 6.792 billion. Therefore, Oxy's free cash flow margin for the quarter was 36%. It's respectable, but it's not like earth shattering stuff. It's an interesting stat, right? Because you can do this with almost every single company. How about this just as a sort of a comparison? Firstly, Oxy to Oxy. Price to intrinsic value projected free cash range over the past 10 years. Current, 0.88. At one stage, it was as high as almost five. So guys, when you see Oxy's like, on the up, uh, it's still got a long way to go, you know? So if, you, if you're in this stock and you're long and you're patient, you, you will be rewarded because we're a long way away from a, a price to intrinsic value of almost five. We're only borderline one. The uh, Oxy price to intrinsic value projected free cash flow is ranked higher than half of the 635 companies in the oil and gas industry. The industry median right now is 0.92 and Oxy 0.88, so it's almost the same number, right? So when people like me say, you know, at the current price of WTI, Oxy is literally printing money. We're talking purely of free cash flow. But if you dive a little bit deeper on the metric and you say, um, how does this compare uh, as a ratio to their revenue? Then the picture changes a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I'm not talking it down because Oxy has had a phenomenal turnaround uh, during 2020, 2021. Um, so I'm not minimizing what they've achieved at all. And management, I believe, in my very humble opinion, have done a great job in terms of uh, balance sheet repair post Anadarko. And of course, no one could have foreseen the, uh, the COVID pandemic happening, but uh, they've, they've done pretty good. But we still have a long way to go. So unless you're prepared to be in this position, perhaps for another year or two, uh, maybe you can find a better buy. Enterprise value is the measure of the company's total value. The reason why I'm including this is because very, very frequently we talk about market cap. The market cap or market valuation, the market capitalization of the company is basically the sum of its outstanding stock multiplied by the stock price on, on the day. So whatever those, um, whatever that variable is, obviously one of them is relatively fixed. How many shares are in the marketplace and what's the stock price, which is fluctuating up and down? That's the market cap. A better valuation, depending on who you ask, because it depends on why you are looking at this particular number is the enterprise value of a company. So I can tell you from a personal point of view, if you work in mergers and acquisitions, as a general rule, you wanna look at enterprise value because it gives you an indication of what you should pay for a company if you were to acquire it. So if I wanted to buy Occidental Petroleum today, the enterprise value of the company is about 72 billion while the market cap is only 31 billion. Now there's a huge delta between these two numbers. And if you really think about it carefully, 72 billion as an enterprise value is probably more realistic as a reflection of the combined value of Occidental and Anadarko as a single entity. Fair, right? But now we see the market uh, cap currently. So the number of outstanding shares multiplied by the stock price is only 31 billion. Sanofa's energy, for instance, which I covered in the previous video, 
has a much smaller delta. You'll see it's 27 to 39. By the way, Sanofis looks to me like an awesome pick for the people who uh, have been longing it for the past year. Damn, you've done well, man. That was a good pick. Um, Imperial Oil is a similar company. Imperial Oil is actually uh, sort of the mini-me Exxon of uh, Canada and then Suncor over here. But you can see none of these companies have uh, a multiple market cap to enterprise value of like more than two, right? So two times 31, 62. Oxy's enterprise value, 72. 54 times, uh, sorry, 27 times two, 54. 26, 38 times two, you know, it's, uh, you get where I'm going, right? So there's a huge delta there. So you can actually see just at a quick glance, and, I, and obviously I only have five companies here and I don't even know Eco Petrol from um, Europe somewhere. Sorry, I don't know, but I don't know that company. So I'm just looking at the other four, which I actually do know a little bit. And none of them are as undervalued as Occidental in terms of its enterprise value. Now, a lot of people, uh, many, many people, including uh, some of the outstanding members of our uh, fan club here on uh, YouTube, uh, have mentioned and asked questions about um, Oxy Common versus Oxy Warrant. Uh, we know, for instance, that uh, one of our superstars, Kevin Zhao, has moved all his Oxy holdings into warrants. Um, you know, uh, I don't really have an, a, a sort of an opinion on this, but I am going to sketch the difference for you. The other one that uh, came up recently is uh, uh, Vince uh, Gupta uh, sent me a note over the weekend and he says, uh, which is better? Uh, and uh, he actually mentioned the, the fact that Kevin had moved all these holdings and Oxy into warrants. So guys, let's quickly do a recap here on, on, on the two. Firstly, if we look at the chart for the last year, so one year from today going back, the blue line over here is Oxy Common. The yellow line over here are the warrants. And you can see that they've pretty much been tracking each other and it's pretty much the same ups and downs. Most of the time the warrants have outperformed the uh, common stock and from time to time the common stock on a couple of occasions have outperformed the warrants. Overall, uh, Oxy was only up 65% over the last year while the warrants were up 84%. So um, let's talk about that quickly and then I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, we'll go from there. But like at a, at a glance, at a snapshot, just keep this picture in mind, right? So they've been following the same trajectory, but the warrants have outperformed Oxy in terms of the actual uh, return on investment if you were holding them. So what's the difference? The difference is this, um, and remember, uh, as I said, it's not one is better than the other, they're different. Okay, so the warrants first. The warrants are like um, an, a, a call option with an extended time frame because you still have another six years that you can hold these warrants for. And remember the warrants give you the right to buy Occidental at $22 per share. Now, if you go and buy warrants today and the warrants are trading at about 15 bucks and they buy, by doing so, you've given yourself the right to buy Oxy in the future over the next six years for $22 per share. You're working with a cost basis of about 37, right? You can buy Oxy in the future for 22 and you paid $15 for the warrant, that's $37. Now, if um, sometime in the future, Oxy is trading at $52 a share, you can say, okay, I can now buy this $52 stock for $22, which means I have a theoretical gain of $30 per share. But if you pay $15 for the warrants, then you have a $15 gain per share. So that's the, the, the pure math of, of the warrants. But you don't need to convert them into common. The only thing you don't want to do is let them expire worthless. And that's a possibility too, because if Oxy pulls back to like, let's say $20 a share, and you own the right to purchase Oxy for $22 per share, why would you do that? Because you can buy it on the open market for 20 bucks. So why would you exercise your right to buy Occidental for $22 when you could just buy it on the open market for 20 bucks? Nobody would do that, right? So there is the risk that they may expire worthless. That risk, in my humble opinion, is minimal, but it can happen, right? So what you have is sort of an extended period, time frame call option to buy Oxy in the future for 22 bucks. However, you can also just buy and sell the warrants. So you can buy the warrants for $15, and if uh, you know in a year or two from now it's trading at twenty five dollars, you can just sell them for twenty five bucks and you know cash in your ten dollar per warrant taxable gain. So that's one side of it. If you hold Oxy Common, which I do, 
um, then you can say to yourself, like, uh, what is the future potential return on investment on this particular stock? Now, of course, the lower your cost basis is, the more lucrative it is for you to own OxyCommon long, like I do. So if your cost basis is in the teens, so earlier on I joked and said my exit price is 51 because 51 is 17 times three. Uh, effectively, what I'm getting at is that if you have a, 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 a long position in OxyCommon um, and Regardless of where the share price goes in the future, imagine this. So let's say, for instance, Oxy declares a dividend of a dollar a share. Then if you hold warrants, you don't earn that dividend. Warrants do not get a dividend yield. So Oxy long investors who hold common will get that $1 on an annualized basis. But here's the rub, right? So you see, if you say it's a $1 uh, annual dividend, and um, let's say you were fortunate, fortunate enough to time it well and you bought Oxy for $10, then your yield when that $1 dividend is declared is already 10%, regardless of where the stock price goes in the future. And if, if, even if your cost basis is $20 and Oxy pays a $1 dividend, you already start off with a 5% yield on an annualized basis, regardless of where the stock price goes. Now, I mentioned uh, a while back that I had exercised my warrants. I didn't actually plan to exercise the warrants. What happened was uh, the warrants went up like um, 50, 60%. I plugged in a 15% trailing stop. Uh, the warrants pulled back more than 15% and it ex exited my position and sold all my warrants. So I cashed the, uh, the profit on that particular trade. But then what I did was I bought exactly the same number of shares of Oxy on the same day that my warrants were exercised for cash, using cash from the warrants to buy the new stock. And at that point in time, Oxy was trading at about $18 a share. And when I purchased it using my gains from the warrants to offset against the purchase price, my actual cost basis on that particular tranche was about $12. So I have some stocks in my Oxy long portfolio, some Oxy stock in my Oxy long portfolio, that I purchased for less than $10, $12, $15. And I even have some that I purchased um, for about $32. You know, so that overall cost basis that I'm calculating and working with here is in the high teens. That's why I'm joking and saying 17 times three is 51. That's my exit price. You know, if Oxy or when Oxy gets to $51 per share and they do pay out a dividend of, in my example, $1 per share, my yield is gonna be like six, seven, eight um, percent on my cost basis. And my gain on that particular investment is a two bagger plus because at $51, I'd be like, you know, at 200%. So um, that's the difference. I'm not saying one is better than the other. And uh, in addition to uh, smart people like Kevin Zhao, super smart people like Carl Icahn holds a fistful of warrants. I mean, there's a reason why he has purchased so many, many, many warrants. He might sell them and he might exercise his right to buy back into Oxy long in the future. Who knows? Anyway, guys, that's a wrap on Oxy. So if you have ideas and you want to share with me what you think where Oxy is going for uh, Q4 of 2021, uh, and you have some predictions in terms of revenue and earnings per share and free cash flow that you want to share with the group and uh, chat about, I look forward to those comments. And of course, you know, as usual, if you like my content, please subscribe. And um, the comments would be uh, very interesting because as I've said many times before, uh, very frequently your comments are significantly more educational than my videos and more entertaining too. So on that note, this is Mr. Oxy saying, thanks for watching. Take care, I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.